glove to the game. Everybody's got cell phones in Major League Baseball now. Maybe he was telling someone, watch Ichiro make a sliding catch in the top of the first. Took a hit away from Gabe Kapler. Hey, what are you laughing about? They must have appreciated the heads up. This lady, she's got a secret, Rich. Mm, what is that? She did not want the fans in Safeco to know that at the top of the second, Rafael Palmero mm. would hit his 26th homer of the year, 473 for his career. This guy's waving because he might be on TV. The bottom of the second, Ichiro turns on a pitch up and out. Showing up a lot of power since the All-Star break. Ichiro's sixth of the year. This lady, she was settling in, getting comfy because she knew that Brett Boone's at bat in the second would last forever. She's running up those roaming charges right about now. Boone would foul off seven straight fastballs. That's what they call a good at bat. And then he crushes one to right. Mark McLemore and John Oleru would score on a double to make it 6-1. You wonder what some of these people's monthly phone bill. Well, that's right. That's the idea. Hang up. Might want to watch the ball game you paid a ticket for. Huh. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me here? 7-2, the Mariners win. Five of each of those 14 career homers come against the Rangers. John Halama, 4-0 at home this season. Texas just 2-10 against the Mariners this season. Earlier in the day, the A's and Angels both chasing the Mariners. Ramon Ortiz, top one. Terrence Long trying to swipe second, but Jose Molina has different thoughts. And then here, Jose Molina poses Miguel Tejada. Same inning, two great plays from the catcher spot. Bottom four, still no score. One out for Scott Spezio. A shallow fly to right. Here comes John Mabry. Nice sliding grab. Outfield not done for the Athletics. Next up, Orlando Palmero takes one the other way. Terrence Long on the run, making the grab. We're going web gem nutty in the sixth. Brad Fulmer up, testing Mabry again. Playing his third position in the last two games. Doesn't matter where you put this guy. Still bottom six, 4 2 A's, two on, two out for George Fabregas. Fabregas, this ball has eyes. Base hit. 22 hits in this game by both teams, all singles. It's a 4 3 at game after this single. Mark Ellis got a glove on it, couldn't make the play. Next up, David Eckstein. Another two-out freak single. This one off of Corey Bradford. Orlando Palmero scores to tie it up at four. Still in the sixth. Base is loaded, but Tim Salmon struck out by Jim Messier. Bottom seven, Brad Fulmer up. Shallow fly to left. Eric Burns, nice catch. A belly flop. Turf Burns. Oh, that's right in the picture. Same inning, two on, two out. Adam Kennedy called out looking by Marty Foster, and then Marty Foster tosses Kennedy out of the game. Mike Sosha's like, what happened? Well, you see what happened. Maybe he said something to him. Who knows? But he just said, get out of here. Bottom eight, still tied at four. Two on for Garrett Anderson. Billy Koch coming to the game. Anderson fists it out to left. Dunks in, Darren Erstad come on down, and Art Howe's team goes down by one just like that. The Angels have won six of their last eight, all against the A's and Mariners. Now they head up to Seattle for a massive weekend set, just one game behind Seattle. And as for the A's, they found a silver lining in the Thursday clouds in the form of Ray Durham, who the White Sox dealt to Oakland after 12 seasons of service with the team. The White Sox receive AAA pitcher John Atkins and perhaps media and fan backlash in Chicago. The A's receive a new leadoff hitter with pop and cash from Chicago to pay part of Durham's salary. Cardinals here in the second. He legs out a double, but going into second, Pulls up a little lame, you betcha. Stayed in the game and legging out a single to score. He would then leave the game. You can see he's in clear pain. Dusty Baker cannot believe what's going on. Bottom three, Travis Smith on the mound for the Cardinals cruising. Strikes out Rich Aurelia, paints the outside corner there. Fourth inning against Jeff Kent. This is the kid who was brought up to take the roster spot of Daryl Kyle. Showing off some good movement on two very good right-handed hitters. Bottom four, tied at one, Damon Miner. Golf's one out on Smith. It's a 2-1 Giants lead. Bottom five, same score. Runners on the corners for Jeff Kent. And Smith gets him swinging. 
top six, still a 2-1 game. JD drew up with two on and Drew got it off of Ryan Jensen, 14th of the season. It's a 4-2 Cardinal lead. And this is your new Giants outfield with everybody hamstrung. Ramon Martinez, Tom Goodwin, and Schwan Dunstan in right. Top eight, 4-3 game, a leadoff pop-up by Jim Edmonds. Who's going to make the call? Dunstan trying to get over there. Windy day. Edmonds in with a double, but Felix Rodriguez would pitch his way out of the jam. He couldn't pitch his way out of a paper bag of late, so this is good news for the Giants. Strike out the side. Bottom nine, two outs, still a one-run game. JT Snow, check swinging, he went around. Jason Isringhausen closes it out. Cards win four or three to take three or four from the Giants. Dunstan went three, four, four, stealing his first base since last August, but still Dusty Baker can't believe his luck with his outfield. Padres and the Diamondbacks, top of the fourth. That's where we pick it up. One out, one on. Phil Levin lines at the second. Junior spy, a nice grab, and even better, doubles off Ryan Klesko. Bottom of the fourth, one on. Still one up from the Padres. We're down. John Patterson, it's in foul territory. Bubba Trammell sliding for the catch. But the fan makes the catch. It is ruled. Fan interference. Take another look. The ball clearly could have been caught by Trammell. Umpire rules it. Fan interference. It is an out. What are you smiling about? Bottom of the fifth. Two outs, two on. Dimebacks up one nothing. Matt Williams making four nothing. Three run jack off Oliver Perez. But Williams is third homer of the year. Top of the sixth. Here's Tom Lampkin trying one on for size. Quentin McCracken, speaking of size, goes up and makes the grab. Taking a look. McCracken, the properly timed leap to Rob Lampkin of a home run. Bottom of the seventh, two outs, bases loaded. It's Q again. What a week McCracken is having. Clears the bases with a three RBI double off Jason Kirshner. The Diamondbacks up nine to nothing. They go on to win 10 nothing in support of John Patterson, who goes seven and a third, five hits, no earned runs. Beloved Red Sox needed a win just to get a split of their four-game series with the Devil Rays at the Fens. Pedro great all the time, but especially after a Red Sox loss. They were coming off back-to-back -back losses to the Devil Rays. Set down the side in order in the first. Set down the side in order in the second. Here in the third, already with a 2-0 lead. Quick pickoff throw. Jose Offerman couldn't handle it. Carl Crawford's paying attention, showing off the wheels. He's going first to third. The next batter for Tampa Bay, Randy Wynn. Terrific hitter, but he walks this time. Next batter, Andy Sheets with runners on second and third. Martinez strikes out Sheets, looking to end it. Bottom of the third, Manny Ramirez off Luis De Los Santos. Get out of town and into the net. 4-0 Boston. Here's your next batter. Jason Varitek going the other way, but it ends up in the same place. In the net, back-to-back -back Jacks. Red Sox have outscored their opponents 92 to 37 in the third inning this season. Pedro strikes out Cox for Martinez, fifth K of the game. That was in the top of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth. Uh-oh. On a one-two pitch, De Los Santos high and tight knocks Daw back down. So top fifth, guess what's coming? Pedro's first pitch hits Ben Grieve. The home plate umpire Mike Everett gave warning to both. I protect my players. I don't take nothing from anybody. Something uh, I'm known to do. A lot of people misjudge it, but hey, that's the way the game is played. That's the way it's always played whenever Boston and Tampa Bay get together. You wouldn't think the Devil Rays and Red Sox would have a rivalry, but for some reason they do. Got Jared Sandberg, got Crawford, and sits down Sheets in the top of the sixth. Pedro had at least one strikeout in his first six innings. Got a strikeout in the eighth. Mm -hmm. And gets Crawford with the change in the dirt. Varitek would finish him off with the throw. Pedro, eight innings, two hits, no runs, one walk, 11 strikeouts. And the Sox get their split, and they win six to nothing. It was Pedro's 250th career start. Royals and Tigers, bottom of the first, Damien Easley up. You know, at a recent private luncheon, Tiger GM Dave Dombrowski, who has since apologized for all these comments, had those harsh words about Easley. And you know, I love him. He's a great guy, tremendous person. Still not hitting 200. So Easley early takes Miguel Asensio up and out. That's Easley's fifth home run. Next batter. Bobby Higginson, Dabrowski had some words about him, again, since he's which he's apologized for. Solid player will make $11.84 million next year. You try to trade him. Oh, boy. And Higginson followed by uh, striking out. Top of the eighth, Luis Pujols going to the penny. Wish he had the injured Matt Anderson. 
Dombrowski had words about him. He said he's good when he's healthy. Could you trade Matt tomorrow? I'd love to see you try. If you can, call me. Again, Dombrowski has apologized for all these comments since. So Jamie Walker comes in, runners in the corners, gets Raul Ibanez to fly to right. The Tigers win 5-2 to two after the 9-3 double thing, right. huh? We'll move on to the Phillies and Cubs. Bottom one, one on two outs. Brandon Duckworth towing the rubber for the Phillies today. And a rubber neck looking out at Fred McGriff's 22nd home of the season career at number 470, 2-0 Cubs. But this is what usually happens when these two teams meet. Cubs beat the Phillies in the first five innings, but unfortunately for Chicago, the game goes on past five innings. And in the seventh inning stretch today, Dave Kingman. Best baseball town in the U.S. King Kong looking great. So is Scott Rowland in the eighth of a 2-1 game. Moise Salu can't glove it. Two base error on Alou. And after an intentional walk loaded the bases, Tomas Perez steps up and rips Kyle Farnsworth to right. All the way to the wall. Every Philly on base come on down. Pat Burrell, Rowland, and Travis Lee. It's a 4-2 game. We're still in the eighth. Bill's looking for more. Jimmy Rollins at the plate with Perez on third. Hunley, what's he going to do? He throws down on the, to get Rollins on the strikeout, and Perez swipes home. Take a look at it. It's ruled a fielder's choice as Hunley can't make the tag. Rollins, you always should run the first. Show off why there. Got the Phillies another run, and the Phillies go on a win thanks to that fat eighth inning. Take the last three of the four games set out, scoring the Cubs 17 to 8 in those games to win. April 16th, up against the Marlins. Top of the fifth, one out. Nobody on Eric Owens. Ground ball up the middle. Robbed by Orlando Cabrera. And Owens is thrown out at first. Owens thinks he's safe. He'd be wrong. Bottom of the fifth, Brad Penny. Some blister issues have to be taken out of a jam. Carl Pavano would come in to pitch, get Cabrera, and get Cliff Floyd to get out of the jam. Tied at one, bottom of the six, Pavano strikes out Vladimir Guerrero, swinging. Two batters later, Andres Galarraga strikes out to end the six. Pavano faced eight batters, struck out five. They traded runs in the eighth in the top of the ninth. Juan Encarnacion, base hit, scores Preston Wilson. Marlins at a 3-2 lead. Bottom nine, two out, tying run on second. Vladimir Nunez strikes out Brad Wilkerson to end it. Sarlis against Jack Wilson. And he strikes him out. Just two batters later. Aramis Ramirez gone. Sarlis had six strikeouts. Bottom of the first, two on, nobody out. Jeff Bagwell, what a month he's having. Get out of town off Chris Benson. Bagwell 17th. Astros had a 3-0 lead. They had an 8-0 lead in the top of the sixth. Pokey Reese lines one back to Sarlis, knocks it down. Cool and calm, throws him out. Top of the seventh, it's still 8-0. Brian Giles, grounder, off Bagwell, but to Biggio. And Sarlos is covering. Right place, right time, right play. Top of the ninth, Sarlos again showing his agility. Man can field his position there against Keith Osick. The Astros go on to win 8-0, a complete game. Six-hit shutout for Sarlos. The first complete game by an Astros pitcher this season. First by a Houston pitcher since Roy Oswald did it September 9, 2001. Bagwell, five ribs.